Good evening, everyone. This is Andrew here and wanted to do another brief discussion on Hurricane Dorian. Uh, looks like as people join the live stream here, I'll just kind of ease into uh, how the storms progress throughout the day and what, key, what we can expect along the uh, southeastern United States over the next few days. Uh, no real trends and model guidance today. There's nothing really indicating uh, any changes in the forecast that would be significant or that would, you know, cause cause, you know, alarm. Uh, the main thing that has been the focus is that Dorian is going to slow down as it approaches the southeastern U.S. coast. And regardless of the exact track, there's going to be wide-ranging impacts through gusty winds, through heavy rain, and uh, through real headache in terms of uh, planning. And um, what am I trying to say here? A real headache of just overall kind of ruining plans and making for some really nasty weather days across the southeastern United States all the way through next Friday, so about a whole week. Um, here in North Carolina, we will not see any impacts, if any, until next Thursday or Friday. That seems hard to believe with a hurricane sitting just off of the, uh, just east of the Bahamas, but that's that's the nature of the storm. It's going to slow down significantly and not make its way up here until you know Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. So while we have time to prepare up here, down in Florida, they do not have that luxury. They only have a couple of days remaining. So let's get into it here. It looks like a few people have joined. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to just uh, drop them down in the comments here and I will get to them as best as I can. So today Dorian has undergone some rapid intensification as forecast. It was, um, and I just got an, an alert on my phone as I said that, uh, that the uh, National Hurricane Center has issued a special uh, bulletin that uh, Dorian has been upgraded to a category four. The hurricane hunters are actually in the storm. So uh, you can see it, it's much more impressive looking than it was uh, yesterday. The eye has really opened up and cleared out. You know, you can see the ocean actually through the visible, through the infrared satellite imagery here. You can see how well defined it is. And uh, they just released a special bulletin that the, the hurricane hunter aircraft reconnaissance mission had found winds that were so intense that they went ahead and upgraded it to a category four uh, outside of an update, which is a pretty rare occurrence for them to um, issue a special advisory for that. So uh, now, uh, now that that is the news, you know, um, uh, Hurricane Dorian is a Category 4 hurricane, so we're looking at Category 4 Hurricane Dorian. It was forecast to become this strong. It kind of exploded today when it got over that warm ocean of water. There is no wind shear to impinge on it. There is no dry air to be seen, um, so there's nothing really in its way that's going to cause the storm to weaken. You know, we said the same thing with Florence last year. It just kind of suddenly weakened because it got outside of the Gulf Stream and it kind of broke down who's to say that that Dorian won't do that as well but it looks like it will maintain its strength as it continues traveling west but to get off of this slide and uh, get things moving here looks like some people are watching uh, thanks everyone for tuning in if you have any questions feel free to drop them down in the comments below so for a, a wider view here what's going on uh, you can see how close it now is to the southeastern United States this is a little distracting so I'm actually going to turn this on to the shortwave infrared that's a little bit better so uh, you can see you know here we are in North Carolina um, Central North Carolina is right here. We have South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. You have uh, the Grand Bahama Island right down here. You have Abaco Island down here. You have Bimini down here. It's not quite showing up on this map, um, but we have uh, Major Hurricane Dorian now very well defined and very, very easy to spot on the satellite. And you can see that it's kind of making this if we start at the beginning of the loop and then follow it to there, it's kind of moving in this west-northwest direction and it's going to continue doing so before taking a slight bearing back south. Um, some model guidance does not actually have the storm making a landfall. That's kind of a moot point. I would caution you to kind of ignore that at this point. It's going to get close enough to cause impacts and it doesn't really matter where landfall occurs because it's going to drop so much rain, it's going to slow down, it's going to be significant enough that uh, it doesn't really matter what exact place gets the, the you know, the eye of the hurricane uh, it's still going to be a, a very high impact storm for a lot of people so as that goes on um, coming down here and then kind of just tracing the southeast coastline as it goes up something like that uh, causing impacts from florida to georgia south carolina uh, north carolina before finally we will bid this thing good riddance sometime next weekend so yes i'll say that again next weekend it's going to take a week and a day possibly for this thing to go from here curve make this c-shape all the way back out to sea so we're not done with dorian by a long shot um, it's still going to stick around for a while the steering currents there's really not much of any steering currents and it's going to stick around for quite a while and you'll be hearing about it for about the next week or so 
So I see some people have tuned in and the first thing I like to do in these videos is if you're wondering where you can get all this information, you hear people talking about it, but you're not sure where to go, go on over to Google, simply type in NHC, hit return on your keyboard and the National Hurricane Center is the first link that pops up here. You're taken to this landing page and you have the active storms here, you have Dorian, and then we have a disturbance out here that we're not gonna worry about right now because Dorian is much more of a concern. And you can see the summary here, maximum winds of 125 miles per hour. I believe that with that update that just popped up, they've upgraded it to category four, not being reflected on this page yet, but they are certainly busy, so they will do that. Here we go, updates right here. Um, data from the NOAA Hurricane Hunters indicate that Dorian has strengthened to an extremely dangerous category four hurricane with maximum sustained winds near 130 miles per hour. Uh, that will be reflected in the forecast issued 11 p.m. So that was a special update that I saw pop up on my phone. Um, minimum central pressure down to 950 millibars. So it's really gotten its act together today as expected. So um, back to this, this space though here, you have this landing page, you can click on the storm, you're taken to a lot of very important information. These key messages are hand created or hand typed, um, created by the forecasters there. They're professionals there at the Hurricane Center. They know what they're talking about. Heed these messages and make sure you abide by them if you live anywhere that uh, is susceptible to these uh, you know, hurricane conditions. So you have several graphics here. The most uh, popular graphic is obviously the cone of uncertainty or the forecast cone. And this represents where the center of the storm is expected to go. And uh, again, I will reemphasize this that you cannot emphasize it enough. The impacts are not limited to this cone. If you live, um, I have some family that lives in Northwestern Florida. That doesn't mean that they're outside of the impact zone. They're probably going to feel Dorian in some way, whether it's through, you know, gusty winds, maybe some rain showers. They're not going to get the worst of the impacts. You know, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia up here, you know, you're not, you're probably going to feel Dorian. It's not going to be a, a life-changing event for you. But if you live in Eastern Florida, uh, you know, it could be that that significant as a major hurricane is expected to make landfall on the, the space coast of Florida, the treasure coast of Florida down here. So, um, you know, the impacts are not confined to this cone and this cone continues to go farther north as Dorian continues to do so. But uh, just keep that in mind that if you're, you know, the center of the cone indicates where the center of the storm is expected to be at those certain points in time. And to, to emphasize this again, I'm going to change the color so I don't clash with the uh, the warning color there. But this dot right here represents 2 p.m. on Tuesday. So that is the day after Labor Day. Um, this, I, I don't see the text on here, but this is supposed to be 2 p.m. on Monday. This is 2 p.m. Sunday. And then this is 2 p.m. Wednesday. So from Sunday to Wednesday, it's only going to go from about Abaco Island, Bahamas, to you know up toward Jacksonville, Florida. So it's a very, very slow moving storm. And that should, indicate, you know, light bulbs go off in your head that says flooding because that's what happened with Florence. The storm came inland. It went about three miles per hour for a couple of days and really slowed down because there was nothing in the atmosphere to kick it away, to sweep it away. So it ended up just sitting there and that's what looks like it's going to happen with Dorian, except it's going to be at a different location, this time in Florida and Eastern Georgia. I will pull up the rain graphic, the rainfall projection in just a minute um, to show you that. But I cannot emphasize enough that having a, a major hurricane from you know 2 p.m. on Sunday. So we're talking about two days from now being at Abaco Island, Bahama. I'm very concerned about the Grand Island, Bahama, um, Grand Bahama Island, excuse me, Berry Islands down here, Bamini is down here, uh, Abaco Island, very susceptible islands. These aren't mountainous islands like in the Eastern Caribbean that can disrupt the storm. These are very flat, you know, resort islands. A lot of people live here. I think on Abaco Island, there's about 17,000 and on Grand Bahama Island, there's over 50,000 very populated islands that are going to be taking, you know, the brunt of a major hurricane for several days. And even in Eastern Florida, you'll probably start feeling the storm on Labor Day. This is Monday, September the 2nd, and then only moving, you know, a couple of hundred miles, maybe if, you know, if 150 miles within 24 hours. So a uh, long lasting impactful storm shaping up for the southeastern U.S. So uh, moving on to the wind graphic. This is an interesting graphic that I really like from the Hurricane Center that shows the earliest uh, reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds. So this has kind of the color shading showing um, this is tropical storm force winds. So I wonder if I can turn on 
uh, hurricane force winds. I guess not. I'm not going to play with that in the interest of time. But uh, this is tropical storm force winds. You can get similar graphics for hurricane force winds. But the point of this graphic is that the more vibrant the color, the more red or purple or warm the color, the higher the probability that you're going to see sustained tropical force um, winds. And again, I was saying about, you know, my friends in northwestern Florida and my friends in Atlanta, you know, they're still going to feel Dorian. Just They're not in the cone. That's not where the center of the storm is expected to go. But they're still in this outer fringe where the probability is pretty low of them seeing that, but they're still going to notice, you know, there, there's going to be something different, though it's going to be a little bit windier. Um, you know, you're, you're going to feel Dorian and you're not going to get the brunt of the impact. So it's a very, it's going to be a large storm, depending on how large the storm actually grows in size determines a lot about it. A bigger and stronger storm is going to tend to pull farther north and it's going to go a little bit east of the, the you know, official track and a weaker storm would tend to slow down, would tend to drift a little bit farther south and farther west of the official track. Um, so we'll have to see to what size Dorian grows and that will, you know, also the larger the storm, the larger the wind field. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and on that point, I do want to mention this. A lot of people like this thought experiment and I'm going to, I guess I'll do it on this graphic here, but imagine you have a pot of water sitting on your stove and you, um, it's sitting here and you take a large spoon and you put the spoon in the water and you rotate it around vigorously and you go faster and faster and faster and faster. And that water in, you know, what happens to that water in the pot? If you keep stirring around the edge faster and faster, that water kind of goes up on the sides and the center of the water, you make a whirlpool in that, you know, pot. So that's exactly the relationship between pressure and pressure gradient force and wind that we have. If you have a storm that is rotating so quickly, if I speed this up like Dorian is, you have it rotating so quickly, the center of the storm is being pressed down. There's a lower pressure there. All of the pressure is escaping into that central eyewall. There's sinking air there, there's subsidence, and all that energy is going down. So if you're taking your spoon in the pot of water and you know going around in circles creating a whirlpool, that's why the pressure gets lower and the wind speeds get higher. So that's where that, that correspondence from pressure and wind speed comes from. Think of that pot of water on your stove and um, think how, you know, if you spin, the faster you spin, the lower that center is going to get and the, the you know, stronger of a whirlpool you're going to create with that. Just think that's an interesting a thought experiment to uh, think of the relationship between pressure and um, wind speed. So in terms of rainfall, we're talking about wind, but what about the rain? The rain is going to be a big story with this. Uh, it has been for the past several tropical cyclones because there's been this trend of them slowing down as they approach the coast. Uh, the friction of land slows storms down too. So if Dorian is just cruising along and gets to um, the Florida coast, you know, once it hits land, the friction actually slows the storm down and it causes it to slow in addition to the steering currents not being there to push it off. So you have a storm just creeping along a very populated area of the southeastern coast of the United States and the Bahamas. We can't forget about the Bahamas. I feel like not enough is being said about Grand Bahama Island and Abaco Island. Um, you know, they're going to be in a very bad position with the storm, and I'm concerned for their safety down there. In terms of the, the rainfall forecast, though, this is the official graphic that comes from the Weather Prediction Center, which uh, you know works with the National Hurricane Center. And these red shadings is 10 to 15 inches, orange. I'll start from the bottom. Orange or yellow is four to six, orange six to ten. Uh, you can see the rest of the color scale here in inches, and you can see that uh, you know the Grand Bahama Island down here getting in this bullseye of rain within the, the next you know couple of days, and then or actually the next three days, and then eastern Florida, a widespread swath of six to ten inches, and um, likely higher. The, the rain, the actual rainfall totals will not be this smooth. The hurricane's not going to um, produce rain that that is. Um, you know, that pretty of a gradient, I guess. It's going to be isolated. There's going to be areas that get a lot more rain. There's going to be certain bands that have heavier rain. Certain areas will just get this this rain coming. Uh, we call it training uh, or training. We call it in, in summertime thunderstorms, we call them training thunderstorms where they train over the same area like, you know, an Amtrak train. They just keep rolling over the same area, dumping rain. Same thing happens when a slow moving tropical system is here. It's just dumping rain over the same area. And if the storm is not moving, like what happened with Florence, the center of the storm was up here dumping. Uh, it ended up dumping over 30 inches of rain in Bladen County. And that is a tremendous amount of rain that causes river flooding in addition to the coastal flooding from the entire storm pushing up against the coast. If you're in a bathtub 
and you swing you know left and right you're sloshing the entire water back and forth if you have a massive hurricane in the atlantic ocean you're sloshing a couple of feet of water up against the coast of the united states it's the same principle so you know you have flooding from the salt water you have salt water coastal flooding and you have river flooding as well unfortunately dorian decided to form and come to uh, the, the united states coast at the same time where there's something we call a king tide which is a very high tide and the tidal cycle throughout the entire year so the flooding will be exacerbated by the uh, coastal uh, the high tide as well so kind of a worst case scenario for potential coastal flooding down here but the, the main thing is this is going to be a very wet storm as expected with the tropical cyclone there's going to be a ton of rain and we have to prepare for that and prepare accordingly i do want to bring mention to the carolinas i haven't been focusing on us too much up here um, because the main story is of course florida right now but it is now looking like North Carolina, specifically Central North Carolina, and the farther east in the state you go, will see impacts from Dorian um, in regard to heavy rainfall. That would not be until Thursday or Friday of next week, but it does look more likely and continues to do that. Um, it looks like a couple of people have joined on now as well, and if you have any comments, feel free to ask, and I'll try to get to the questions as much as possible about halfway through what I wanted to talk about here and i uh, just wanted to give an update on dorian it's the best way to get a lot of information out to people uh much better than a, a you know a post of, of text or a paragraph that people just kind of tend to skim over videos are a little more interactive so in terms of what's steering dorian uh, i want to remind you of the game hungry hippos if you have not seen it it's this game where four players get around and hit this little switch on the hippos and there are marbles that get kind of pushed around uh, by the other hippos and that's what's happening with Dorian imagine there's a tropical cyclone in this area it's a very crudely drawn symbol but there's a lot pulling on Dorian so you have a ridge that's going to be building out here in the south uh, western Atlantic you have in the Gulf of Mexico things pulling out here you have a ridge that's going to be pushing Dorian this way and you have you know things building in behind it I, I misspoke down here I think I, I meant to say upper level low in the Gulf of Mexico pulling on this way so you have a lot of things that's going to be pushing Dorian in different directions. There's not a lot of places for it to go. So Dorian is kind of stuck in the middle of this hungry hippo scenario, and it doesn't have a lot of places to go. So I thought of that game when I thought of the steering currents, and I actually want to pull up Tropical Tidbits, one of my favorite sites for this, to, to illustrate that before I jump over to the ensembles. And it looks like the site is a little bit slower, because probably because of the high demand and the high load on the servers, because so many people are trying to get information which is a good thing, but it also uh, really struggles. So if I animate this, I don't like showing deterministic run, just a single model run, but I want to see if I can animate this. Here we go. And uh, watch what the storm does. It's gonna take a few frames to buffer. So while it does that, I'm gonna talk about it. Um, you know, a lot of things are pulling Dorian in certain directions. When you have that, hopefully, sometimes you would hope that it uh, allows for the storm to get pushed out to sea or pulled into sea or something like that. But in the case of Dorian, it's just kind of allowing it to sit there and there's too many forces impinging on the storm and it's not allowing it to kind of escape. So once this is, it's got three more frames to load. I'm looking up here when these turn white, we can proceed. All right, so we have that. And here you see Dorian down here. You have uh, Dorian, which I don't want you to focus on the intensity of this. You probably don't even know what these numbers mean, which is totally fine. I'm just showing you for the the purpose of trying to explain um, what's going on here. So you see the storm. Every time I hit the key here, it's advancing six hours. And you see the storm, and it sits there. And then it goes up the Florida coast. Then it goes up the South Carolina coast. And then it looks like it could potentially make a second landfall somewhere in South Carolina or somewhere in North Carolina. And there's a lot of rain on this north and west side, and that's what has my attention right now. Not specifically this model run, but if the storm grows in size, there's going to be a lot of rain still inland. Think of Matthew back in 2016 here in North Carolina. Matthew never made landfall in the state, but it caused 26 fatalities and over a billion dollars in damage. Widespread flooding that lasted for weeks. We could be looking at something similar with Dorian, even though it might not actually come into the state. It could be, you know, 50 miles offshore here, but there could still be a lot of rain thrown inland because it's going to be such a large storm system bringing in moisture from the Atlantic Ocean. So that's something we have to keep an eye on. That will become clear as Dorian comes closer to Florida and we see how large the storm is. Then we can start making more precise forecasts about uh, how much rain we can expect here in North Carolina, South Carolina, Eastern Georgia, and so on. 
but the wind is likely to be worse down here. The rainfall could be uh, bad anywhere. Uh, we are very susceptible here in the coastal plain of North Carolina to flooding. We've seen that in the past couple of years. That's obvious. I don't need to remind anyone of that. Um, but the wind is likely to be concentrated. The worst wind damage will be concentrated down in Florida. But back to the, the hungry hippos example, where you have a lot of things uh, kind of impinging on it and, and you know fighting for dominance on how to push it away. That kind of leads us to the ensemble plots here. So this is a great website from the University of Albany up in eastern New York State. And this is from the European um, Ensemble. I don't know if this has run yet. No, it's not. So this, uh, if I bring this back up, this is the European Ensemble. And that is not what I meant to do. Here we go. So we have these warm colors. The warmer the color, the, the higher the agreement in the model. So each one of these skinny white lines are individual perturbations of the model. What that means is that each model starts off it's forecast with a little bit stronger of a hurricane or a little bit weaker and it kind of takes an average of all the possible scenarios and gives us an average idea of where the storm should go so the the european model earlier today actually kept the storm offshore the entire time and it was very matthew-esque in its track it was like a matthew 2.0 it never actually made a landfall which matthew did make landfall in south carolina very briefly, but this this specific model run never had it making landfall, and it kind of traced the southeast coast, which still gives very high winds and a lot of flooding rain inland. So the storm's not going away. There's still going to be impacts, and uh, you know, I saw Brad Panovich, a meteorologist down in the Charlotte area, tweet last night. It's a very true statement. He said there's hundreds of model runs remaining, individual model runs. There's hundreds of them remaining before Dorian gets there. Don't get caught up on one single solution. Instead, focus on the impacts, and that's what I plan to do in tomorrow night's broadcast. I want to focus more on the impacts. I might do another video of throwing together an emergency kit and uh, just kind of walk through that and talk about impacts. There's a lot of meteorology thrown at you. It can be kind of frustrating when you just hear about uncertainty, and uh, that you know the buzzword with tropical cyclones. You have a lot of uncertainty. It's kind of frustrating. You want answers, but trust me, meteorologists are just as frustrated as you are trying to figure out what the heck the storm is going to do and uh, you know how it's going to respond to certain variables and how we can tweak the forecast to best inform the public. It's much better to be prepared than sorry, better safe than sorry. It's always a good idea to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So with that being said, jumping on to my second to last graphic I wanted to show here, this is from Hurricane Tracker, H-U-R-R, hertracker.com. You can see this URL up here. And they are not affiliated with the National Hurricane Center, but they are also very smart people that produce these graphics packages. And this is just, a, I, I'm a numbers person, so I like to see, you know, quantity with something. And this shows the long range impact chance of Hurricane Dorian. And uh, these are percentages, uh, chance of being impacted by a classified system. So a classified system means a name system like Dorian. So, you know, 100%, the Bahamas, the hurricane's basically on your doorstep already. There's going to be hurricane impacts in the Grand Bahama Island, Abaco Island, down uh, Andros Island down here. There's a hurricane watch out for that area now. 90% in Florida. The The solution of it going back into the Gulf is much less likely now. Um, down here in the Western Gulf, you're safe. Um, up here in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, there's still uh, a non-zero chance. And in some cases like Eastern Georgia, you know, it's still a good chance that you're going to see hurricane uh, conditions before it weakens into a, a weaker system. But, you know, we saw with, with Michael, Michael is a minimal category one hurricane and produced tremendous flooding more. I'd, I'm not going to, I'm tentative to say this because of the data, but I'm pretty sure that more people cumulatively have lost their lives and more economic loss has occurred from category one hurricanes over time than category five hurricanes. I'm not sure on that. So I'm hesitant to say that, but I would not be surprised if that was the case. Do not get hung up on the category of the storm when it gets outside of Florida. Uh, that That's a, a major pet peeve I have saying, you know, a category one hurricane is less dangerous than a category three. You go stand in the category one hurricane and tell me that again and we'll talk. Um, anyway, so back on the, on the questions here, Teresa asked, how is Palm Beach looking, Andrew, a little better than earlier? Uh, not necessarily. I want to go back on this same hurricane page. You can click warnings, cone, interactive map and you can zoom in to see exactly what the hurricane center is projecting and if we zoom down here to palm beach so here's west palm beach port st lucie is up here palm bay um, you ask for palm beach I, i'm going to go with west palm beach for now i think that's what you were asking um here we go so 
you know, this has a major hurricane very close to Port St. Lucie, all up, you know, here's Cape Canaveral up here, anywhere from Cape Canaveral to Melbourne to Port St. Lucie down to Jupiter, Florida, Boca Raton. I don't really think it's going to be a very uh, nice few days for, for you folks down there. I know there are people watching that you had shared talking about um, you know, animals that were in uh, reinforced concrete cages and that were in potentially low areas. I would make sure your preparations are uh, completed and I would prepare to uh, take all measures to keep them as safe as possible because, okay, West Palm Beach. Okay, so um, this particular one has uh, Dorian getting very close to that area and I would be uh, very weary about staying in that area. Um, at this case, I'm not authorized to make evacuation orders, but the threat level really doesn't get higher in terms of strong storms coming to, to the east coast of the United States. Um, I don't know what Florida government has planned for evacuations. Uh, evacuations can be just as dangerous as the storm itself. You know, a lot of people rushing to get to a safer place can cause just as much chaos as the storm itself. So um, I'm not authorized to make those decisions, but I would make sure that you are prepared for a very dangerous storm and make sure that accommodations are made to where you can, um, you know, withstand hurricane force winds. And if you're in a flood prone area, I would get to higher ground. And um, that's really all I have to say. It's, it's kind of a scary, sobering thought to, you know, hear that, but the threat level doesn't really get much higher in terms of a hurricane impacting U.S. soil. Um, so I don't really know what else to say that could convince people to, to take measures otherwise, but um, I would like to talk to some of you individually. I know y'all had, had joined. If you have specific questions, that would be, be great, and I could try to address. The, one of the luxuries of not being tied to a television company or any kind of corporate entity, I can devote time to individual requests, unlike people on TV who are showing, you know, hundreds of people, um, hundreds of thousands of people, in some cases, information, I can attend to more specific requests and try to direct you to a source that can answer your question or that can best help you. So uh, take advantage of that, reach out to me, and um, we will we will get through the storm together, and it will be a rough one, but we will uh, soon see this in the history books, and we'll be recovering from it, and we will see um, what Dorian does, and hopefully it just weakens and like Florence did and just kind of sputters out and hopefully it goes back out to sea. Hurricanes have a mind of their own and they can do uh, strange things. So we'll see what happens with that. I think that is just about everything I wanted to, to say. I want to leave the cone back here. Um, Kurt asked, how far from the storm center to hurricane force winds extend? It's a great question. They actually just had made update of that in the um, advisory. So I wonder if I can see it here. Yes, so to answer your question, hurricane force winds extend outward up to 30 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend up to 115 miles from the center of the storm. So, um, Kurt, to answer your question, and now, Teresa, I see you echoing that same question. If we go to the current track where I just was back here, you know, 100 miles, I don't know if there's a, a measuring tool on here, but the storm is likely to grow in size. When you have a lot of moisture, it kind of collects the background moisture and it, it continues to grow in size. As it approaches the coast, um, I don't know if you remember Irma a few years ago, but Irma continued to grow in size just because there was so much ample moisture. There was nothing to disrupt the storm, so it kept growing in size, so that wind feels likely to expand. So if you have hurricane force wind extending 30 miles from the eye, and it makes landfall north of Port St. Lucie, you know, anywhere from, so I'm going to very roughly draw this, probably something like that would be seeing hurricane force winds sustained, and tropical storm force winds would be anywhere within, you know, 115 miles, something like that. Um, that's, that's a very rough estimate. I think that if I go over to here, I can pull up this wind speed probability and actually show you a more specific thing. So hurricane wind speed probability um, down here, this kind of golden color represents 40 to 50% chance of sustained uh, hurricane force winds. So, uh, you know, anywhere in here that it even gets to this darker yellow color talking about higher probabilities of hurricane force winds um, extending, you know, 30 miles on either side of the eye of the hurricane. All right. So, uh, so those just, yeah, that's very helpful to see. Thank you. Sure thing. I'm Teresa. It's, you know, it's a very, it's likely to grow in size, like I said, and this, this cone gets wider because more uncertainty exists, but the wind field's likely going to expand and the, uh, the actual hurricane may kind of uh, even if the storm weakens a bit, that can actually cause the wind field to expand even more. I don't know if any of you remember Hurricane Irene back in 2011. 
I think Irene at one time, or no, I'm thinking of Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy at one time, its windfield was over 1,100 miles wide. That tropical storm force winds could be uh, felt. So that is not Dorian. I'm not talking about Dorian. I'm talking about Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. A weaker storm can still mean a very far-reaching impact in terms of winds. Dorian has yet to be seen. Of what happens, we can take a current look at the storm. And I'm going to go off of this one and kind of show you relative. So right now, um, you know, the hurricane force winds are kind of extending where these um, kind of that cut in the cloud. If I stop the Im uh, image here, the hurricane force winds are likely in this inner core of the system. And then tropical storm force winds are going to be anywhere outside where you see kind of the edge of the storm. It doesn't have to be underneath cloud to have tropical storm force winds. So if you just kind of transpose this over to the path of the storm, very roughly something, you know, you're looking at a wide swath of southeastern Florida that's still going to have tropical storm force winds and where the exact center of the storm goes determines, of course, where those highest winds go. But um, the storm's likely to grow a little bit tomorrow and also on um, into Sunday and Monday. And again, we're looking at a landfalling major hurricane. If I go back to the graphic here, a landfalling major hurricane is likely on the day after Labor Day. So Labor Day is going to be near or on Grand Bahama Island, and then a landfall is looking likely the day after. So this is September the 3rd on uh, the afternoon of Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday would, would be when impacts extend up into South Carolina, and then Thursday and Friday would be when we start to feel Dorian's impacts up in North Carolina in the form of heavy rain and likely some gusty winds. Is yet to be seen how severe those will be, um, but we will have to monitor that. That will become clear when Dorian approaches the coast. So that's something we have to watch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it here because we're at about 30 minutes, and that's about how long I wanted to go. I don't want to take up too much time, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on a Facebook message, or you can follow me at... Um, Andrew WX Center. So if you want to follow me, you can jump on over to Twitter if you're on Twitter and follow me at um, this handle right here, Andrew WX Center. And I uh, tweet more frequently on there when there's hurricanes. There's a lot more smarter people than me who tweet a lot of things that I retweet, and I'm just trying to get information out to everyone. And uh, so you can follow me on there or follow me on Facebook here. And uh, we will see what Dorian decides to do. I will leave um, with this down here at our this kind of view of the storm as it continues to uh, go tonight. We're looking at an infrared satellite image. That's how you can see it at nighttime because right now it's dark over the ocean. Um, but we will see what Dorian does tomorrow and see how the storm maintains. And uh, thank you all for watching. Be safe, and I'll be live sometime tomorrow evening uh, with another update on Major Hurricane Dorian. Thanks for watching, and be safe.